Hi, good morning, everyone. It's uh, 11.02. What a wonderful Saturday today. And uh, this is our uh, 18th uh, webinar on electrical safety. I want to thank Cape Electrical to join with us <clears throat> in creating mass awareness on electrical safety. While we continue to do this, 
you would have seen yesterday one of the massive fire in Mumbai, Andheri Kulla Road, where Havel factory is gutted and you could see the huge smoke up to 15 to 20 kilometers. And uh, I'm sure everybody would have seen the ad of the Havels. They say none of their wire catches fire. So what the lesson is, make your house in order before we preach. While I say this, the house that we live, the precious house that we have built or the stay, make sure our electrical safety is very safe for the family to live. The protection from earthing, lightning, and such protections all in place. We pay huge amount for maintenance for electrical safety, fire safety. But how much we care that, you know, this system is still active and working in condition. So this is a continuation of our awareness program on electrical safety. So today, the 30th of July, we are conducting the webinar on lightning protection in high rise buildings. Ladies and gentlemen, this initiative is brought to you by Cape Electric. And they are celebrating their 25th year of continuation of their business. And they have wonderful brands that you see on the left side, Raycap, the band, and uh, PCA and KLK. So they represent, apart from their manufactured various um, electrical safety protection products. Kep Electric, if you look at it, in 1998, self-protection device, SPDs were very new in India. Kep installed the first SPDs for protecting industrial electronic system. DC combiner solution for solar PV were unknown ones when Cape delivered outdoor DC panel in 2002. In 2004, technical seminar on lightning protection not only helped the industry in solving failures related to lightning and earthing, but gave in-depth knowledge about international standards. In 2016, TNS system with PME for industrial earthing without, with earth electrodes in soil carrying safety and earthing a level above the existing practices. 2019, global earthing system interconnecting EHV, HV, LV, and ELV system for large industrial and commercial installation and smart, smart cities. Solutions with almost negligible touch voltage without earth pits in soil was introduced in 2019. In this year, they have revolutionized the auditing system. They introduced SOL, a digital and artificial intelligence platform as knowledge and process partner to ensure safe operating of low voltage electricity, which is in short, SOL. It's now very fast catching up people are all subscribing, uh, subscribing, uh, subscribing to it. If you're an auditor, it helps you a lot. So we have a website, which I'll be uh, introducing in the chat box. You can go register yourself and become a partner of Sol. Leading the market with the right solution is our motto and the team in electric, Cape Electric are continuously trained to provide end-to-end -end solution from design to implementation rather than selling a product for the customer and needed. All of you are aware of Mr. Gopakumar, who is very active in LinkedIn, very active in various electrical association platform. 
and uh, no word can express the kind of knowledge that he carries and the knowledge that he's been uh, preaching in the society, especially after uh, COVID. He's having more than 28 years of experience in electrical safety, especially on lightning protection, EMI and EMC, et cetera. Carried out hundreds of site studies and failure analysis of electronic equipment, hundreds of electrical accident analysis, including various fire accidents from electricity. He has conducted more than 1,000 training in various countries on subject of his expertise. Gopal Kumar is a member of National Building Code, Electrical Committee, and ETD20, responsible for IES and IES 62305. He is also the member in working group the technical committee in IEC responsible for international standards and guides for lighting protection for structure, person, installation, and content, as well as light, lightning hazard preventive measure. Ladies and gentlemen, we have exactly one and a half hour. So we will uh, end up this presentation we will take a question and answer. You find the Q&A box on the bar of the Zoom. You can, I request everyone to post your question only in Q&A. In the chat box, we will not be able to track your question. So try and avoid to put your questions in the chat box. I request everyone to put the, your questions down. And if time permits, those who raise their hand, I'll invite them to speak to Mr. Gopu Kumar as related to, related to today's subject. Kindly do not bring talk any other subject other than lightning protection today. I welcome Mr. Gopu Kumar to take this platform and continue your journey of knowledge sharing. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. I hope my sound is clear. Yes, that small changes in my system. One moment. Because sometimes when we use a two screen, the screens are always confusing. I hope you are able to see my screen, which is at the moment the empty. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dominic, for the nice uh, introduction. I hope my the screen is visible now. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so, well, one moment, I have some small trouble. Yeah, so today, uh, good morning, uh, all participants. Uh, uh, it's interesting to see that today also we have more than 200 participants. Today our subject is lightning protection, but uh, as you, as all of you know, lightning protection is a big subject. We are going to exclusively touch upon some important topics which is applicable for high-rise building or large industrial building. So the contents of the presentation are from ISIEC 62305, or uh, you can also say from the National Building Code 2016, internal and uh, external lightning protection. Now, the first point which I wanted to tell you is uh, the ISIEC 62305 is actually classified, uh, it is a classified code of practice. Uh, code of practice is a little bit above the standard as per the uh, uh, regulation of government of India. Code of practice is a mandatory requirement which has to be implemented in every building. Uh, you can look at it in the regulation 12.2 of CEA measures relating to safety and electric supply. So basically, ISIC 62305 is a code of practice. Similarly, National Building Code is also a code of practice. So here, uh, uh, I am a member in the TC81 of IEC, which is uh, responsible for uh, making standards related to lightning, lightning safety, lightning protection, and the hazard prevention. Uh, I am in the ad hoc groups and maintenance team, which is mentioned there, uh, MT14, MT21, working group 18, and so on. 
So with this uh, uh, introduction, let me start the presentation. As I said, uh, we are. I am not going to explain all about lightning protection. I am trying to be specific uh, to some kind of uh, challenges which we are facing every day, especially in high-rise buildings. The first uh, one, what is this uh, standard IS IEC 62305? It is actually adopted from IEC 62305, which is a standard used globally, all over uh, the, uh, uh, globally, uh, 62305 is the adopted standard, whether it is in Europe or America or whatever. Of course, the number may change depending upon the national uh, things. For example, in America, they don't call it as 62305, they call it something else, but the contents and the principles are same. So basically, IEC TC81 makes the standards, which is for global use. It consists of four parts. Part one talks about basics of lightning analysis and uh, you know threat analysis, uh, how lightning can be harmful to you, what kind of solutions are possible and so on. What kind of parameters you are supposed to take care. Similarly, part number two, 62305 part number two talks about uh, a risk assessment. A risk assessment is a technique which is included in the standard based on various parameters. You can find out whether your building require lightning protection or not. If your building require lightning protection, say for example, a small building, a normal residential building, probably lightning protection may not be required. Whereas a large building, high-rise building, lightning protection may be required or is required mandatorily. So that decision can be taken by making a small risk assessment. Then if you are if you are building require lightning protection, lightning protection is classified into four levels, level one to four, one to three, four. The second question is you are building require lightning protection and what is the minimum level of lightning protection required? It is not to find out what maximum protection is required, but what minimum that means Whatever the money you are spending for installing lightning protection, it has to be economical and it has to be useful. That is explained in the part two risk assessment. Part three talks about uh, external lightning protection. External lightning protection consists of uh, air termination, down conductor, earthing and shielding. Air termination at the top of the building, how you are avoiding a direct lightning strike into the building. Second one, how safely you are carrying the lightning current from top to bottom of the building. The third one, earthing, how safely you are dissipating the current to earth. Shielding, how safely you are avoiding some kind of spark overs and so on. The part four talks about protecting the internal parts of the building. Here, the subjects are equipotential bonding, surge protective device, bonding and shielding, cable routing, and so on. So there are several subjects there are several components which has to be taken care if you install a lightning protection and today's subject we are going to discuss external lightning protection that means protecting a structure means a building and that itself a high-rise building so uh, i have to be specific on that particular subject otherwise you know a uh, uh, lot of uh, you know lightning protection to explain it completely probably take uh, two or three days so this is the reason i wanted to be specific when we talk about lightning protection two theories are explained uh, in the standard one is the lightning protection level and the second one is the lightning protection zone lightning protection zonal concept in fact the zonal concept is not only derived from the lightning protection standard the zonal concept is derived from all the electrical safety, from the basic safety onwards, a kind of zoning has been carried out. When you look at lightning protection, always people ask, what is this 10 by 350 microseconds? The energy content of lightning has been generated in a laboratory as a wave shape. Finally, you know, whatever the components which we are using need to be tested. For that testing, we need to have a standardized energy form so that all manufacturers can be at the same level to do the test. And that kind of energy, equivalent energy, has been created in the form of a current wave shape as 10 by 350 microseconds. Means in 10 microseconds, the current 
probably you know 100 kilo ampere current from zero to peak goes in 10 microseconds and it comes to half value in 350 microseconds so basically 10 by 350 is a, an equivalent wave shape current wave shape of a lightning strike don't think that lightning always will be 10 by 350 it is not like that this 10 by 350 is an equivalent representation of the energy contents of a lightning in the form of an impulse current there is one more impulse current or one more uh, wave shape which we always refer which is called as 8 by 20 microseconds where i am showing it in the green color 8 by 20 means the current goes from zero to peak in 8 microseconds and come to half value in 20 microseconds generally 8 by 20 is used for uh, testing uh, or it is the standardized wave shape for testing surge protective devices and some kind of components which is used in lightning protection system now two subjects which you should understand this components of external lightning protection means uh, you have a building you have some clamps clips conductors those need to be tested with 10 by 350 microseconds wave shape and uh, the smaller devices such as spd sometime 10 by 350 microseconds which is called as type 1 spd sometime the spds are tested with 8 by 20 microseconds which is called as a type 2 spd so they basically there are two energy wave shapes risk assessment the second part of uh, uh, the uh, lightning protection the i c 62305 part 2 risk assessment risk assessment is a technique with which uh, the risk involved in a building has been calculated say for example depending upon the place where your your building is located number of thunderstorm days per year size of building type of service number of people and criticality in case of failure at one side and then the standard gives you a, a kind of a tolerable level tolerable level means uh, up to what level you can uh, have uh, safety for example for human safety 10 to the power of minus 5 in the sense out of one lakh uh, lightning strike one can be harmful to human being for protection of electronics 10 to the power of minus 3 means out of 1000 strikes one can be harmful to electronics so based on the tolerable compared with the tolerable limit uh, on one side and on the other side uh, the minimum cost which which has to be spent for lightning protection we are making um, a kind of an assessment and find out first number one whether your building require lightning protection or not number two what level of lightning protection is required if lps is necessary now please understand that risk assessment for a larger area a larger a village a town district all these are not possible why i mentioned this is uh, there are some articles which we are reading nowadays people claim that uh, village level lightning risk assessment has to be made uh, 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 district level lightning risk assessment has to be made all these are actually not possible risk assessment is more made for a typical structure or a typical building just to find out whether lightning protection is necessary or not if necessary lightning protection is classified into four levels level one to four depending upon the current for example level one 2.9 to 200 kilo ampere level four 15.7 to 100 kilo ampere so four levels the purpose of the finding out the level is to find out how much uh, whether the money you are the, the economics which we are spending or the cost which you are spending whether is it worth or not that is a simple method now how lightning protection looks like in a typical building i'm just showing you some of you probably already knows this particular picture because this uh, typical picture i always refer imagine you have a building with a flat roof the first job is to make an air termination i have made an air termination here as a grid there are three methods a rod vertical rod or air termination mesh or cantenary wire the third method is cantenary wire and there is a technique which can be applied to find out the probable place of lightning strike which is called as a rolling sphere method rolling sphere will not protect a building it's not a material it's a technique which has to be applied to find out 
whether the air termination is able to protect the building or not. So basically, in a simple way, on a flat roof building, the recommended practice is to have a mesh. Let's say, for example, I have made a mesh and there are some electrical items which is coming like a solar PV, an air conditioner chiller, which is above the uh, above my mesh. In that case, what I should do is I have the option of making a equipotential bonding and probably I have the option of making some rod at near to the solar PV, maybe two rods near to the solar PV and two rods near to the chiller so that uh, these rods avoid the direct lightning strike into the chiller. This is a typical case. For example, I made a grid of 15 by 15 meters, few rods to protect the roof mounted air conditioner and solar PV. Equipotential bonding with the air conditioner and solar PV has been made at the top of the building. This is a typical case. So a mesh, some rods, everything interconnected together. This makes the air termination system. The second part is down conductor. As I said, rolling sphere or the electrogeometric sphere is used to design or used to position the air termination system. Air termination is not a protecting technology or protecting technique like it's not a component. It's a technique to find out the probable place of lightning strike. The second part is down conductor. In the picture, I have put some uh, dotted here, some dots. It is just a representation that uh, there are 10 down conductors in this particular building. So 10 dots means from the roof, we look at 10 down conductors on the building. The first point of this down conductor is number of down conductors specified in the standard. Number two, if you require 10 down conductors, these 10 down conductors must be placed outside the building, all around the building on the periphery of the building. It has to be uh, equidistance if possible, or the minimum distances which is mentioned in the standard must be maintained. Say, for example, 10 meter between minimum 10 meter between each down conductor or sorry maximum 10 meter or an average 10 meter between down conductors so in this typical case we have let us say for example 10 down conductors you can see the building at the top there is a mesh and there are 10 down conductors and uh, these particular down conductors each of the down conductor has to be connected to an earth termination system. What is an earth termination system? It consists of an earth electrode because whatever the current coming from the top due to a lightning strike through the down conductor has to be dissipated to soil. So there are 10 earth termination system or 10 earth electrodes in this particular case. So you have the air termination, you have the down conductor and you have the earthing. The fourth subject which is of equally importance is equipotential bonding. What is equipotential bonding? You can see the down conductor is connected to MET. MET is nothing but the main earth bus bar of the mains incoming panel. Down conductor must be connected to the electrical system, protective earthing of the electrical system, and an equipotential bonding has to be made. Now, when we talk about equipotential bonding, down conductor and the earth bus bar can be directly connected. But this earth bus bar and the phase and neutral conductor has to be equipotentially bonded through a device which is called as SPD, surge protective device. So basically, your lightning protection consists of an air termination, a down conductor, a earth termination, and an equipotential bonding system consisting of SPDs. Now, this kind of vertical electrodes. Uh, one of the technique which has been uh, an improved version of uh, earthing system is called as a type B earthing. Probably you can see here all the earth electrodes are interconnected together. One of the technique which is included is the ring earth. That means you make a earth electrode all around the building as a ring. That is more efficient than putting individual vertical or horizontal earth electrodes. So type B ring or foundation earthing. More advantageous for a critical building or a high-rise building. So basically, your lightning protection consists of air termination, down conductor, earthing, and SPD. Now we go to the next most important subject, which is more appropriate or more applicable for buildings of a higher height or taller buildings or buildings of larger size, such as an industrial building, which is length and to breadth probably length is 100 meters breadth is 50 meters and so for such 
large buildings we are also supposed to calculate the uh, separation distance before that we have to make a decision electrical separation or bond what is electrical separation Electrical separation means separation distance required at top floor between electrical wiring, metal frame, and from the uh, from the down conductor. Say for example, electrical separation. It means the parts of lightning protection system must be separated, physically separated, electrically separated from the structural parts of the building. I have better pictures. I will show you the. Always the separation distance is calculated with the equipotential bonding at the ground floor. Here you see with equipotential bonding in the sense the down conductor and the electrical system are equipotentially bonded. Now, how to calculate the electrical separation or electrical separation distance? So, as I said here, there are two techniques. One is electrical separation. Next one is bonding. It means you make equipotential bonding everywhere. First, let us look at what is electrical separation electrical separation means at the roof you have the air termination then you have the down conductor and at the bottom of the building you have the equipotential bonding sorry equipotential bonding now the parts of air termination means the air terminal uh, the grid at the top and the down conductor technically speaking if you are adopting the technique of separation then you have to calculate the separation distance yes and keep the air terminal and the down conductor physically away from the building away from the building away from what away from frame of the structural steel, away from electrical wiring and apparatus, away from rebar, away from metal doors, away from metal continuously connected metal doors and windows. So basically, in order to avoid the flashover, say for example, a lightning is hitting this corner of the building, due to the surge impedance of the down conductor, there can be a flashover from the air termination to the building or something like this there are several flashovers at several locations of the building in order to avoid flashover technically we are keeping the air termination and the down conductor physically away from the building at a separation distance yes so it's very easy to understand now how the separation distance is calculated there are constants, for example, depending upon the level of lightning protection, 1, 2, 3, 4, the constants are given in the standard. Depending upon the insulating material, air or concrete, wood or brick, the materials are given. You always select the most unfavorable material. For example, uh, you know, next slides, you will see how this has to be done. Then. The coefficient, like the number of down conductors, one down conductor, two, three, and more, these constants are always given in the standard with some notes. Please have a serious look on that. With those standards, I'm just trying to find out the separation distance of a, in an RCC building where I'm going to make an external lightning protection system, a level two lightning protection, height of my building is 35 meters, length 30 meters, width 25 meters. Just as an example, you think that it's a 10 floor building, 3.5 meter each. I'm going to make an external lightning, or I wanted to make an external lightning protection system with the equipotential bonding at the bottom. I'm trying to find out the separation distance. So, this, if we take uh, the values from the constant, S uh, equals uh, Ki divided by Km into Kc into L. L is nothing but uh, the distance from the top of the building up to the equipotential, the height of the building in this particular case, that is the L. If we calculate the separation distance required in this kind of a building, a 10 floor building is about 0 0.924 meters, almost one meter insulation is required in air, almost two meter insulation is required in case of brick or concrete. And this is with the equipotential bonding at the bottom of the building. Now, if you don't have the equipotential bonding at the bottom of the building, the separation distance is really unknown. It may be several meters. Now, the question is, 
when you do lightning protection are you making this equipotential bonding you are making an exposed lightning protection system are you making the equipotential bonding in india unfortunately lot of buildings the equipotential bonding do not exist under that condition please note that the separation distance would be very very high it is actually practically what can happen is there can be flash over at several points of the building now what does the same calculation i am making for a building of height 70 meters lightning protection level 1 20 floors building 3.5 meters each with equipotential bonding under that condition the separation distances are 2.64 meters in air and 4.92 or about 5 meters in brick what does this mean is the air termination mesh and the rod and parts of this uh, down conductor see at the bottom you have equipotential bonding away from the equipotential bonding the distance increases and the at the roof of the building a distance of approximately certain meters are required between the air termination or between the parts of lightning protection system and the building material how far it is 1 meter separation distance for a building with a 35 meter height level 2 you know the previous case which i explained 2 meters for if we look at the separation the insulation material is actually brick not air brick 2.5 meters air if your building is 70 meters height 5 meters if your building is 70 meters height and the insulating material is brick insulating material is nothing but you you see between the air terminal and the down conductor you have to put some support and if that support is brick or if the distance which we are calculating from the air terminal to the metallic part if the separation is physically by brick you need almost 5 meters for a 70 meter building with lightning protection level this means the air termination system in the last case has to be 5 meters away from your rcc building just imagine is this practically possible practically keeping air termination or down conductor away from the building is very difficult you need to make a 5 meter maybe a, a, a frp support and you have to make the mesh above the building 5 meter above the building on the side 5 meter away from the building which is practically impossible now when it comes to you know this is what is explained in the 62305 now once when we explain this subject uh, to the construction site or to the uh, clients most of the clients say that uh, no 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 this is not required you leave it we don't want to calculate the separation distance or we don't want to consider separation distance please note that if you don't consider separation distance your lightning protection system is inefficient lightning may hit the air termination but instead of the current flowing through the down conductor there will be flash over between the air termination to the metallic parts of the building as a result current is going to flow through your building which may destroy so many things the second claim lot of high rise buildings in india are using non standard air termination called as early streamer emission system in india all of you knows very well one rod one down conductor and one earth electrode in large industrial building again one rod one down conductor and one earth electrode what is this down conductor it's generally 90 percentage of the cases it is a 70 square millimeter insulated copper wire what is the claim these manufacturers claim that one rod protects 100 meters and finally the claim is it is as per the french standard nfc 17102 if we look at the french standard french standard is not explaining esc as a one rod one down conductor and one air thing it is explaining a proper equipotentially bonded a proper lightning protection system consists of several components so basically the french standard is similar i would say over and above iec 62305 you are making some more arrangement if you read the nfc standard it explains lightning protection as 
you make a pakka lightning protection system as per 62305 and over and above you make some additional arrangement like a esc air terminal that means the story which is the propaganda which is made in india one rod one down conductor one earth electrode is absolutely wrong this is never written in the national french code now anyway our subject is not only that our subject is separation distance in the same french code you can find the, the separation distance calculation say for example class 5.6 separation distance uh, s equals ki divided by km into kc into l the same calculation which is included in the is iec 62305 in the nfc standard you can also find this kind of a picture what does it mean is the down conductor you keep equipotential bonding at the bottom of the building and you have you see here the air terminal and the down conductor separation distance s approach limit of metal element that means the metal elements of the building must be away this much s uh, this much distance from your building the same technique of is ic62305 is included in nfc17102 but my question to the uh, uh, the clients or the people those who are using esc i am sure you must have never considered this particular point of course in the conventional lightning protection or as per 62305 also in most of the cases or in some cases clients ask to neglect separation distance but we always oppose this and we sometimes reject uh, uh, the designs uh, or we we sometimes don't offer any solution to them if uh, uh, the separation distances are not calculated now please understand that the same separation distance is applicable for uh, lightning uh, for an esc standard nfc standard as well now if we apply the same separation distance you can find the same values in alls as well if we apply the same separation distance for building number 1 35 meter building with equipotential bonding so you get a value of 2.1 meter the separation distance required for esc rod is double than the normal thing in brick again 4.2 meters 70 meter building the calculation says about 5.6 meter and 11.2 meter away from the building what does it mean it means the esc rod and the down conductor has to be the separation distance in the typical indian way one down conductor in that case the separation distance required is 2.1 meter for a 35 meter building with a level 2 almost 11.2 meters for a 70 meter height building with lpl1 where we consider the separation material is brick so so much distance away from the building that means if you look at the actual scenario 70 meter building the air termination and the down conductor has to be physically away from the building how much physically away 11.2 meters physically away from the building that means you have to have some kind of non or isolated or insulated material between the uh, the red line and the building red line is nothing but the parts of lightning protection and the distance keep on reducing once when we reach us towards the bottom for example 5 meters and at the bottom of the building 0 meters if equipotential bonding is made if it is not made of course all these calculations are wrong in an industrial building with uh, you know hundreds of meters long then the distance is something like this so you you have to have a insulator here 11.2 meters another insulator probably 5 meters so basically the air terminal and the down conductor has to be kept away from the building 11.2 meters away from the building this 70 square mm wire insulation 1.1 kv insulation has nothing to do with this 11.2 meters insulation 11.2 meters insulation is a large insulation the spark over voltage or the voltage which is going to create due to the surge impedance of the cable is very high this also means the lightning current flowing through the conductor to the down conductor can make a flash over up to a distance of 11.2 meters so basically the separation distance calculations are very much included in the building this is mainly applicable for large buildings 
you see for smaller buildings this is not very much uh, uh, or the distances are quite less because the length of the equipotential here the length i am showing on the cursor 70 meters in a normal building probably 7 meters then the calculation changes so this is actually a challenge Whenever you do lightning protection, please always keep in mind lightning protection is not only about air terminal, down conductor and earthing and SPD. It is also about the separation distances. If the technique implemented is an exposed, isolated lightning protection system. So now what is the solution? The solution is... The clause 6.3.1 of IS says, in structures with metallic or electrically continuous connected reinforced concrete framework, a separation distance is ignored or not required. What exactly it is? You see, yes, the standard is made for different kind of construction for the global use. In, uh, in some countries, Europe and America, even today, uh, the the uh, wooden constructions are followed. Different techniques are there. Predominantly in India, for large buildings, we always use uh, RCC or PEB. So this clause, what it says is, in structures with metallic or electrically continuous connected uh, uh, reinforced concrete framework, separation distance is not required. That means RCC buildings, uh, separation distance is not necessary if you make use of it. In PEB buildings, separation distance is not necessary if you make use of it for that what you should do use of natural component what is natural component natural component made of conductive material which will always remain in or on the structure and will not be modified that means the material which is used for construction of your building such as interconnected steel reinforcement metal framework of structures etc may be used as part of lightning protection system that means the reinforcement and metal framework. So other natural components can only be considered as being additional to LPS. What is the other natural component? For example, you have an aluminum facade. The frame of the aluminum facade has to be considered as an additional thing. It is not a, a steel reinforcement. It is not a complete metal framework for the structure. Metal framework for the structure, what is what the standard mean is the, the column itself is steel, PEB building. So your aluminum frame has to be considered as an additional thing, not as a, a down conductor or so. Now, how to make a building with a natural component? What you are seeing in the picture is a building with RCC. It's a RCC building, maybe several floors, multi-floor building. At the top of the building, you have the air termination, which is always exposed because lightning must hit the air termination. And probably uh, uh, some covering for the uh, uh, the parapet. Uh, I'm, I have taken the picture from the standard. That is why actually in India, we don't have the habit of covering the parapet with this kind of a conductor, but we have the habit of making handrail on the parapet, metallic handrail on the parapet. If you have a metallic handrail on the parapet, the metallic handrail will do the job of air termination. Then, the dark, the black color line, which I've changed to red, means an additional conductor embedded inside concrete. It's an additional conductor embedded inside the concrete. Now you have item number six, which is basically some kind of equipotential bonding connections. Please understand that this is a typical picture. Each of these component has to satisfy its requirement there are several technical requirements it is not like you put a conductor from top to bottom of the building and your job is done it is not like that so basically item number nine steel reinforcement in concrete with superimposed mesh conductor so basically for high-rise buildings and buildings with uh, or buildings of larger size uh, separation distance is very difficult to calculate and maintain basically calculation is possible but maintenance is very impossible the best method is use the naturally available steel as a part of lightning protection system for example in an rcc building you can put an additional conductor embedded superimposed in the reinforcement and this particular conductor will support your structural steel in performing the whole building as a lightning conductor for example 
Now, in this particular case, uh, the down conductors and the earth electrodes or the, the foundation earthing is not exposed. It do not affect the aesthetics of the building and it is most efficient for electronics because what happens, you know, whenever there is a current flow through the structure, the amount of current, the current is split to several hundreds of routes as a result, concentration of current through one specific conductor is less because the current is going to flow through the entire building. As a result, the effect of the current flow with a large di by dt rate of change of current is reduced and you get maximum protection for your electronics. Now, how the performance of this natural component is carried out? It is carried out by making a continuity resistance test. Continuity resistance test, I'm sure all of you are aware. The important point is you are supposed to make a meter, make this test with a meter of minimum 10 amps uh, uh, current. I have seen in a lot of places, uh, the normal uh, earth electrode testing meter is used for this particular purpose. Actually, it won't work. Uh, even there are meters like uh, uh, the, the, the meters which is used for testing the earth pit resistance, the Werner method, four pole method, three pole method, those meters are used for this particular testing, but please understand that it won't work. The minimum requirement is the meter which is used for this testing shall have a, the, a test current of minimum 10 amps, anything higher than 10 amps test current is necessary and the resistance from the one part to the bottom, top to bottom, shall be lesser than 0 0.2 ohms, 200 milli ohm. So this is how the performance is ensured. Now, when it comes to this, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, embedding or using natural com component, we face a lot of challenges. The first one, if you read the standard, the standard is allowing materials such as copper, stainless steel, copper bonded steel, MS means a, a, bare, cop, a bare steel conductor, galvanized steel, all these materials are allowed. But usage of each of these material, some specific recommendations are also made in the standard. Similarly, the standard also recommends or in the picture, it also included to use the rebar itself. You use the rebar, you can use an additional conductor such as copper, stainless steel, copper bonded steel, MS or GI, or you can also use the, the rebar itself with some kind of special clamping, special welding and so on. But the standard also had recommended like this, in order to avoid confusion between different type of steel rod in concrete, it is recommended that a round steel rod of at least eight mm diameter with a smooth surface be used as additional conductor in contrast to the ordinary ribbed surface of the reinforcing rod. So what the recommendation is, it is recommended, please read, it is recommended if in a standard, if the word recommended is used, that, that means the standard is recommending to use. The standard is recommending, you can use the rebar, but the standard is recommending to use a conductor with smooth surface. That means a, a, a conductor of copper, stainless steel, or what, whatever the material with a smooth surface as an additional conductor in the concrete is recommended in the standard, which is preferred favorable or it is preferred more than the ribbed material. Number two, what kind of material which we use? Whenever it comes to the type of material, we always talk about galvanized steel. All of you know so GI, which is available uh, very much abundantly in India. Now the recommendations in the standard, table five, galvanized steel may be corroded in clay soil or moist soil. That means the galvanized steel, if you use a natural component, imagine you are making a grid under the building and your building has to be there for the next 100 years. And if the galvanized steel GI strip or GI conductor, which is put under the building, if it corrode within 10 years or within 20 years or within 30 years, after 20, 30 years, you have nothing on the ground. So you will be in deep trouble. So galvanized steel may be corroded in clay or soil, in moist soil. So using natural, while using natural component, you have to double think about using GI. Galvanized steel in concrete should not extend to soil due to possible corrosion from steel just outside the concrete. I have a picture I will show you. 
galvanized steel in contact with reinforcement steel in concrete should not be used in coastal areas where there may be salt in groundwater you see one technique which is used is a foundation earthing if you look at the ex explanation of foundation earthing is uh, the uh, conductor is inside concrete and the concrete or the rcc floor is in soil it is called as wet concrete a concrete or an rcc which is in soil is often called as wet concrete that means it has got some wetness and the resistance of that concrete is approximately 100 ohm meter that is what is specified in the standard based on several studies so these recommendations are made the last one galvanized steel in contact with reinforcement steel in concrete should not be used in coastal areas because if you put the gi inside the concrete gi will create it will corrode faster so gi cannot be used in soil because of corrosion gi cannot be used in uh, in in coastal areas or uh, in uh, places where you have salt water you will be in trouble and these comments you are supposed to read and understand it in the class e 4.3.4 materials uh, the behavior of galvanized layer of on steel in concrete is very complicated. I, I will just read the explanation or which is highlighted. Galvanized steel should therefore not be used in coastal areas and where there may be salt in groundwater. That is one point. The second is as the use of galvanized steel in concrete require evaluation of many external factors, this material should be used only after careful analysis. So using GI for this purpose inside concrete has to be carried out after careful analysis but unfortunately nowhere it is written what careful analysis so uh, it is very difficult to make uh, an, uh, to find out an answer for this careful analysis the simple method is don't use it with this in mind the use of other mentioned material is preferred over the use of galvanized steel the standard has recommended very clearly that gi if you put it in, inside concrete is having certain problem Either you analyze and do it, if you can, preferably use the other material over galvanized steel because galvanized steel is a problem. Now, further, these are the further classes. For example, galvanized steel outside the concrete in contact with reinforcement steel in may under circumstance cause damage to concrete. What does it mean? You have the building here. Now, item number 10, we are taking a connection outside from the concrete to do something in soil. And if you are using galvanized steel in this soil, it will be forced for accelerated corrosion. Galvanized steel will disappear within few years, within few months. So galvanized steel electrodes in soil should be connected to the steel reinforcement in concrete by isolating spar gap. That means uh, here, a direct connection in the soil would significantly increase the risk of corrosion. Isolating spar gap should be used. So for example, what it says is, if you wanted to connect, you have a natural component used as down conductor and you have to connect to something which is in soil and that something is galvanized. Don't connect directly is the recommendation. You put a spar gap in between. So electrical isolation or spar gap is necessary. So these recommendations are there in soil. Why I am very specific in this particular case is uh, whenever we go for or whenever we design, always people try to mention that use GI because GI is cheap. Use MS because MS is cheap. So GI, these are the challenges. Other case, people always try to use, uh, you know, instead of... Uh, you know, the first recommendation is you use your MS conductor, the, the sorry, the rebar itself. The standard says to use an additional conductor with a smooth surface. The second recommendation from the client is then you use a bare conductor. That means you use a steel conductor, round, smooth surface, but without any coating. In this case, out of our experience, what we are facing is after finalizing, after making this uh, installation, we are supposed to check the continuity resistance. In several cases, the continuity resistance check is failing. Using MS is having that particular risk. Sometimes the required resistances are not possible, probably due to the corrosion or the, the, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the joints are not proper and so on. So MS material is also having a risk. Please understand that. 
after casting your steel or after construction you cannot change anything so if you wanted to make some modification impossible now designing of air termination let me skip it uh, the there are several techniques for designing the air termination which is uh, uh, the techniques are called as the mesh method uh, the protective angle method the rolling sphere method uh, not very important for this uh, presentation let me skip it challenges the challenges which we use uh, or which we face uh, in every electrical every installation is uh, most of the time when we get the drawing uh, the construction is already over the structure is already over and then they ask to make a, a design and once when we tell that sir there is a important subject called separation distance you have to keep your air terminal one meter away from the building or two meter away from the building nobody allows it then people always say uh, uh, the other challenge the roof mounted apparatus uh, because the uh, uh, when we get the drawing most of the time the roof is empty but uh, later we came to know that there are so many things coming up chillers are coming the the uh, facade cleaning the rail and its associated equipment are coming that means you were uh, uh, probably the parapet you cannot use because something else is going to come roof mounted apparatus are unknown then in pb buildings uh, the one of the biggest uh, challenge which we always face is uh, the usage of screws don't use any screw don't put any hole use some kind of uh, sticking material adhesive material so you with an adhesive, you connect your uh, conductor holders into the RCC. Please understand that these adhesives have certain life, probably five years or seven years. After seven years, you have to uh, replace it. And more than that, by using adhesive, you are isolating lightning protection. And uh, in case of any strike, there will be spark over across the adhesive tape. So that means the effectiveness of lightning protection is gone. The second challenge which we always face is the down conductor. Down conductor in large uh, multi storied buildings, uh, if we say that down conductor has to be outside the building, then the first answer is no, no, no. That part of the building, there is glass facade. This part of the building, glass facade. So it will affect the aesthetics. You cannot do that. You route the, all the down conductor through one side of the building. So all the three sides are glass you cannot touch that particular part the your whole lightning protection down conductor has to be routed through one side practically this is a violation of the standard your lightning protection system will not work the second case there is no space to route down conductor third case multiple down conductors in one route all these are actually violation of the standard and then in some cases architects are providing a dedicated shaft for down conductor so I have three down conductors. You have 15, you require 15 down conductors and all the 15 down conductors as group of five, you take through three sh shaft. That is also not possible. If a typical building requires 10 down conductors, all the 10 must run outside the building, preferably all around the building is a must as straight as possible. So routing the down conductor through the a dedicated shaft is also practically not possible. It is a violation of the standard. Then when it comes to earthing, most of the buildings doesn't have any space. There is no space, no soil, because the entire thing is probably uh, we have to buy some land from the neighbor to put an earth electrode. This is the situation. We are always forced to keep earth electrodes far away from the building, which is also a violation, because if you keep it far away, as I said, uh, due to surge impedance, the potential differences will be very high or potential differences will be higher and higher. The last challenge is a lot of clients are always attracted towards the chemical earth. People think that chemical earth is a savior and chemical without chemical earth, if I say that uh, I don't use chemical earth, then people say, aha, you are a cheap supplier. I will go only for a very big supplier who supplies a chemical earth. So please understand that the, the, the story of chemical earth uh, is uh, not for... Uh, our normal application, I will show you after the presentation, I will show you how this is written. Chemical earth is required for places where you have soil resistivity more than 3000 ohm meter. I will show it at the last. So basically, 
going to the conclusion, what exactly is required is the best solution can be made by using natural components, especially for high rise buildings or large industrial buildings, use natural components as much as possible. For example, in air termination system, on the parapet, you make a handrail with an MS pipe or with a, with a, with a pipe or a square uh, material. You, use a, you make a handrail. Your handrail will be a permanent structure and the handrail will work as a air termination system. You must interconnect the handrail with the structural steel, something like this. The handrail must be connected. So use the handrail, which is an efficient way. Structural designs, a lot of buildings have got structural designs, like some architectural design steel materials at the top of the building. We are sometimes forced to keep a rod over and above this structural design, which is practically not required. If your structural design is a steel material, that steel material can work as air termination. A small paint above the steel material you can ignore, which is also written in the standard. Uh, this small thickness of the paint, we can ignore it. Basically, the structural designer material, you can see if you look at the high-rise buildings, most of the high-rise buildings have got something at the top uh, with uh, some kind of design for aesthetics. So those materials, if they are made of steel, that can be used as air termination. This is one. Number two, down conductors. It can be embedded inside concrete. You put an additional conductor, not MS conductor, not, you don't use the rebar because these two are major challenges, which is these recommendations are made in the standard, not galvanized steel. Better you use copper or stainless steel or copper bonded material. Three materials can be used, which is not having any side effects. Then you can also use the PEB columns. Nowadays, a lot of high-rise buildings are with the PEB columns, steel columns, that also can be used. Similarly, for earthing, the best method is used to found, use the foundation earth. What is foundation earth? Here you can see in this particular case, a building with, uh, you can see here uh, the green color line, which is nothing but uh, a conductor, which is embedded inside the concrete foundation of the building. That will do your yeah, uh, earth termination system. So this particular use of natural component also can be used for applications such as transformer, DG, you know, our typical method is two, two transformer neutral to earth electrode, transformer body to earth electrode, DG to earth electrode, UPS separate earth electrode, lift separate earth electrode and all. Actually, those method which we use for separate separate earthing of transformer dg ups of course it is a wrong method the best and the recommended method is you make use of the natural component but please understand that the company or the person who is designing he has to be skilled enough to understand and make a design appropriately electrical system also can be integrated in steel structure when it comes to lightning protection I'm sure that a lot of engineers already or they always believe in ESC lightning protection system because of the propaganda. Now, please understand that lightning protection and earthing is a subject which actually require a lot of skill. But more than skill, the, the, the way it is explained by the salesman is given always, uh, you know, uh, people are, uh, you know, the propaganda things are always trusted. Don't go behind the propagandas, please download these standards all the informations are there and you can use appropriately now when it comes to the earthing of dg ups uh, and the electrical system uh, you can also use the natural component this is explained as tns system with pme in is3043 uh, across india we are we have designed and executed and tested probably more than 100 buildings, large size multi-storied buildings, large size industrial buildings with this technique where there is no earth electrode in soil. The transformer neutral is connected, transformer body is connected, DG is connected, UPS is connected, lift is connected, your electronic installations are connected, DMS is connected, everything integrated into the natural material and that is the best and the recommended method which is included in the IEC standards, not now, probably for the last 20 years. We are a little bit late. 
after the introduction of the Nas the national nbc 2016 national building code uh, the civil engineers started accepting this particular system so the best way of making lightning protection and earthing is especially for air uh, uh, large buildings high rise buildings or industrial buildings or modern buildings please see that there is a subject called separation distance which is practically very difficult to maintain in a large building the best way is to use the natural material or integrated everything integrated into the structure this is what i wanted to explain today's presentation with this i would like to uh, thank you we can go for a question answer you can find out the videos of all our programs in the both the websites vidyutsuraksha.com and solvelv.com lot of information are there now at the last uh, i would like to show you the i told that i will show from the isic 62305 how to make the uh, the the chemical earth what is the parameters of chemical earth i am just on the isic 62305 standard you can see here 62305 i am just uh, searching 3000 one moment so here is the table you can find this particular picture in the standard here you can see the section is 5.4.2 or 5.4 earth termination how to make earth termination now you look at uh, the particular picture up to 3000 ohm meter is shown now you read the note here reduction of earthing resistance by extension of earth electrode is practically you know several techniques are there one of the technique is extending the earthing conductor in the soil practically convenient up to 60 meter in soil with the resistivity higher than 3000 ohm meter see the wording is very clear in soil with the resistivity higher than 3000 ohm meter the use of type b earth electrode or earth enhancing compound is recommended so more than 3000 ohm meter two techniques are there one is type b earth electrode or earth enhancing compound is recommended now practically in india most of the places in india we have soil resistivity probably 100 ohm meter 30 ohm meter 50 ohm meter 200 ohm meter for that soil resistivity of course the earth enhancing compound is not necessary and earth enhancing compound only will accelerate the corrosion so with this uh, i would like to stop the presentation and probably we can have uh, a question answer session and uh, we are thankful that we have a lot of participants uh, probably today we have uh, more than 250 i believe over to you mr dominic thank you thank you gopak kumar wonderful session there are a lot of questions coming up on this uh, there are particular question from upendra purohit he is asking page 11 uh, yes minimum thickness of metal sheet please explain for navi mumbai international airport project um can you take up that question um, the third question from the q and a yes 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 yes, yes 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 i i got it page 11 isi 62305 main minimum thickness of metal sheet now let me share the screen for uh, uh, to understand what exactly it is i hope the screen is visible now let us go to the standard page number 11 it is not in page number 11 it is uh, yeah here is the table so minimum thickness of metal sheet or metal pipes in air termination system this part what it explains is use of natural component what is natural component you have a pb building with a metal sheet at the top and that metal sheet is a good conductor it can be used as a air termination provider there are two points here the metal sheet covering the structure to be protected provided the electrical continuity between various parts is made durable 
we have to test and ensure that the continuity resistances are lesser. The thickness of the metal sheet is not less than the value T given in table three. If it is not important to prevent puncture of the sheeting or to consider ignition of any readily combustible material underneath. That means you are building at the roof, you have a sheet. Under the building, you have so many things. It can be some explosive, it can be people walking, it can be some kind of uh, uh, probably uh, normal building or probably some warehouse for steel, for example. And now the minimum thickness of uh, this much is necessary if you consider uh, uh, it is not important to prevent puncture. The thickness of the T of the metal sheet is not less than T given in table if it is necessary to take precaution against puncture or to consider hotspot problems. Now, in this particular case, for example, we don't use lead, titanium, and all. We use galvalum sheet or uh, you see the stainless steel material. Now, if the thickness of the metal is more than four millimeters which is rare, of course, uh, where these are used is sometimes the oil storage tanks. So if the thickness of the metal is more than four millimeters, lightning cannot puncture this material. And uh, you, know, you can use that tank itself as your air termination. Number two, if the thickness is between four and uh, 0 0.5, actually in India, we don't use 0 0.5. I think our sheet is even thinner than this. If the thickness is between these two, 0 0.5 to 4 millimeters, lightning may create a puncture on the sheet. And that puncture probably can ignite some other uh, uh, fire or some other accidents. If you wanted to avoid puncture, in this case, between 4 and 0 0.5, you have to use an air termination system. That means you make a mesh and connect the mesh to the sheet itself. You Avoid direct lightning hit onto the sheet. Very simple. And if the thickness of the sheet is lesser than 0 0.5 meter, it is dangerous to use the sheet as air terminal. You must require a properly used air termination system in the roof. Now, aluminum sheet on main head house, 0 0.7 mm thick. So 0 0.7 m aluminum, 0 0.65. If it is more than 0 0.65, of course, 0 0.7 means lightning may puncture the aluminum sheet. You have to decide whether this puncture, you can live with this puncture or you can also live with the hot spots and arcings due to this puncture. If you cannot live with that, you have to put uh, an air termination at the top of uh, the roof. Preferably, you install an air termination and connect the air termination to the sheet itself, air termination mesh and connected to the sheet itself. That is the best method. I hope it's clear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Such an elaborate um, you know, reply to Mr. Puro. I hope uh, Upendra sir would have understood this. And there's one common question by Surendra Kumar and uh, Mr. Sekar Srinivas. How to select LPS level for high rise building? Yeah, the National Building Code has included uh, a table. The table, uh, I think I don't have it right now, or it will take time for me to search and find out. There is a table included in uh, the uh, National Building Code. If you can allow me two minutes, I will open the National Building Code and I will show you how to uh, guide it or how to read it. One moment, please. So I'm going to share you the National Building Code of India. Here is the National Building Code of India, 2016. You go to the volume number two. In volume number two, you go to part eight here. Part eight talks about building services. This is the part eight. Uh, building services consists of several sessions. Section one is about lighting. Section two is about electrical and allied service. You go to session two. Then you go to the clause number 11. Clause number 11 talks about uh, lightning protection of buildings. Then if you scroll down, you will see the uh, table, I think, I think the table two or three. One moment. Yeah, here, table five. Recommended LPL for a typical building. So here, 
computer data centers and military application and so on. Let me uh, zoom it a little bit so that you will be able to see it uh, properly. Computer data center, military application, you have to go for level one. Low rise hospitals and so on, uh, uh, EX zones, you know, so on two. Then school, banks, residential buildings, uh, level three or four. This is a typical case. You can also do a risk assessment. That means uh, once when you ask us to do it, we will ask some questions or we send an Excel sheet to you. You have to fill up the sheet and we will put it or we will make the calculations and we tell you what minimum protection is required for your building. So based on risk assessment, you can make it. Either you go as per the NBC recommendation or you make a risk assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Gokumar. We have another passionate uh, member, Rakesh uh, Chaturvedi from uh, Delhi. Uh, he's asking, is lightning arrestor are mandatory for all tall buildings? Yes. Uh, if we look at the regulation point of view, we see the what is mandatory or who makes it uh, mandatory. If we look at the electricity point of view, Electricity Act and the regulation, the CEA regulation says, Regulation 36, buildings more than 15 meters height, uh, lightning protection as per ISIC 62305 is required. Now the regulation is changing in the new regulation, regulation number 38 says uh, uh, large buildings require uh, or buildings with more than 15 meters height uh, require uh, uh, lightning protection system. But then people will ask, okay, I have a factory industrial shed which is only seven meters height whether this building require lighting protection or not yes of course uh, uh, these buildings also necessary uh, lighting protection is necessary the first question is whether the the owner of the building should decide whether you need the lighting protection or whether you need to protect your building or not because if the lightning is hitting your building you are only going to be in trouble so a rule wise, of course, more than 15 meter height uh, lightning protection is necessary. And if we go as per the national building code, uh, you can see I have shown you the table level one, two, three, four, depending upon the building is necessary. Industrial buildings, of course, uh, installing lightning protection is a good practice. It is, I would say, mandatory. Uh, so, there are, yeah, there are a lot of demand for a book on electrical safety and its standards. So, if Mr. Gopakumar has an author, probably release a book on, uh, you know, uh, best practices on the electrical safety. I think that book becomes a bestseller. Uh, so anyway, this suggestion keep coming. Uh, going to Satishwaran, uh, he's asking, can we combine air insulation as well as brick insulation while considering? Yes. Uh, no, the worst case uh, need to be considered. That uh, that was the note on the table. The worst case has to be considered. The brick has to be considered. You cannot combine. Okay. So many of you are asking whether I can I get this uh, presentation. I have been saying that the entire recording of this will be available. Um, as I said, one is in our uh, Sol blog, uh, which we have already mentioned in the chat box. So you can go and get it, and also will be circulating. To all the participants, this video you can refer later. So yes, you will get the uh, recording of this video. <clears throat> and uh, sir, Susan Kumar is asking: In large thermal power plant, hydrogen generation plant is installed away from the main units. Hydrogen plant consists of generation unit, filling unit, cylinder storage unit. Where shall we install lightning arrestor on the rooftop of building or away from it? Uh, can you read the question again? Uh, it is... Uh, this is by Sushant Kumar. He is asking in large thermal plant, hydrogen okay. generation plant is installed away from main unit. Hydrogen plant consists of generation unit, filling unit, cylinder storage unit. Where shall we install the lightning arrestor on? on the roof uh, rooftop of building or away from it yes for such uh, critical installations especially explosives or uh, highly explosives in that area the ideal situation is to go for an isolated protection means uh, a cantonary for example you have a, a area let us say 30 meter by 30 meter uh, and the height of the cylinders and all together is let us say 10 meters in that particular case you can erect a three or four pole on the side of this particular area, away from the area, and you put a cantonary wire and protect it. Cantonary wire means a wire like a, 
you know on the overhead line the extra high voltage line there is a wire running at the top of the uh, the current carrying conductors so like a, a cantenary wire you can uh, make an isolated protection and that is the best i'll move on to uh, priya prata mohanty for building already constructed is it required to provide insulator for down conductor installation as in iec 62305 it is written if the wall is made of non combustible material then conductor can be positioned on the surface of the wall is it necessary to maintain separate separate distance separation distance if the wall is non combustible material yes of course the separation distance is mandatory the question is whether the the combustible material here non combustible material here is actually when the current flows through the conductor it produces a lot of heat and that particular heat shall not create a problem to your or it cannot it could not ignite or it shall not ignite fire now here the separation distance we are talking between the down conductor and the metallic uh, parts of uh, the building metallic parts of the building in the sense uh, the power line the rcc the other you know metal uh, for example the facade structure and so on separation distance is mandatory what is possible is in an existing building if you have not considered a separation distance we have a service what we do is we analyze the existing lighting protection system and we can make a retrofitting retrofitting in the sense you already have the columns probably making some additional connections the conditions can be met so this we call as retrofitting of or improvement in the existing lighting protection we can do that but we need to analyze it and we make it we can go to the next question um i think uh, we need to have one webinar exclusive on earthquake there are too many questions on earthquake that we though we have been touching upon i think we need to have a dedicated update because um uh, divya uh, divya kumar uh, what is the recommend distance of earthquake from the building so and also i can see the chat box lot many are asking about how many earthquake is required for so many height of you know, height of the building uh, <laughs> i don't know how do you react to my request yeah we can uh, probably we can make a, a presentation exclusively on earth pits and uh, the earth electrodes in soil distances yeah. and so okay divesh kumar divesh kumar we will come soon with the dedicated webinar on earth pits and such protection and all that uh, so priya pratham hon the i think second question as dgms approved esc terminal to be used in mines would be really dangerous esc is not like what we read from the suppliers catalog one rod one down conductor and one other thing please uh, download the uh, the nfc standard read it and understand it carefully and use it in mines dgms i think i also saw a letter a few months back they were asking to put some lightning protection but with the content of this letter i am not sure i don't remember probably i can refer and answer as uh, Uh, sandeep and bhattacharya um i want to tell, you know tell all the audience who still uh, continue to listen to us uh, uh kep electrical conducts electrical safety audit and they have done you know hundreds of audit of various industries and commercial building so i have already given the uh, email id of mr gopakumar and you are you are requesting to you know deputy someone to your office to discuss practical aspect structural earthing uh, he will be more than happy to assist you if you can uh, uh, reply you know send a mail to mr gopakumar directly i am sure he has a huge man for across india there are a lot of audits happening they will give you right attention thank you sandeep so uh, taral patel how ka in different level are established see k stands only for kilo amperes the, uh, the amount of current uh, which is uh, flowing or the it's a unit of current now this current is of different types in a fault uh, in a in a uh, short circuit uh, current is in kilo ampere but in one style in a fault earth fault again in kilo ampere probably in another style in lightning case uh, kilo ampere but 10 by 350 microseconds in case of surge kilo ampere 8 by 20 microseconds so kilo ampere is only a, the unit of measurement of current 
Now the different types of currents are there in kilo ampere. The fault current is a little bit different. Short circuit condition probably different. Lightning current is different. Surge current is different, and so on. Yeah. So over to you. Yeah. Uh, Suresh Kamle is asking, can you use copper for air termination? Of course, yes. That is the best and the most preferred material, provided that no one should steal it. So the best is copper. Best is copper. OK, uh, same. Uh, Taral is asking, what can we do when building is already constructed? What best practices for protection? It's a, it's a, it's a general uh, question that is Taral yeah. is asking. So I'll just move on. Uh, Actually, we can analyze and we can make improvement. The analysis and improvements are possible. Um, where can I find previous? As I said, all the previous recording of, you know, we have done over uh, 10, 15. Uh, those are available in uh, go to solvelv.com. Uh, in the blog, you'll find all the recordings of the previous uh, webinar. Again, uh, solvelv.com. I have already given the link to you in the chat box. Please browse through that and you can visit and access to those uh, uh, recorded webinars. Uh, John uh, Swami Das is asking, what should be the limit of resistance between air terminal and earth electron? What is the limit of resistance between air terminal and earth electrode? Uh, you mean he's asking the continuity resistance, of course, 0 0.2 ohm 200 milli ohm is the recommended uh, resistance but uh, uh, i would recommend that uh, don't go near to 200 probably you make it uh, half of that uh, or much much lower in our case uh, we are doing a lot of projects across india as i said uh, the continuity resistance which i am happy is always probably 50 milli ohm or 25 milli ohm very small values okay uh, see, the, a lot of people without uh, naming, uh, you know, giving the names, they keep asking. You know, I personally don't feel comfortable to take up any anonymous, uh, you know, questions because we definitely not like to respond and um, correspond in the future. If the names are mentioned, I don't know why people have to, um, you know, hide the name and ask a question. So I'll skip this question, though it is important. But anyway, um, Amit Kumar is asking, sir, mostly fire occurred in short circuit. What type of precaution we adopted in building related to protect electric short circuit so that fire cannot? I think we have attended, we have done this uh, webinar on this electrical yeah four programs we did four programs four yeah. hours. what causes electrical fire what causes electrical short circuit overloading many i think i would request uh, amit to visit again uh, solve uh, <clears throat> lv.com and you will find the answer or probably uh, uh, get you more awareness on this uh, question that you asked shanti swarup Rath, what should be the minimum safe distance of a down conductor from a building what is the minimum safe distance uh, of down conductor from oh, of course it depends on the size of the building uh, the distance from the equipotential bonding we have to actually make that calculation probably in a building it is 10 1 meter or maybe in another case maybe 6 meter or maybe 2 meter it depends on the building yeah i will uh, repeat the website solve solv solve s o l v e solve l v low voltage l v dot com it is not e l v dot com it's a solve s o l v e v uh, e, um, low voltage l v dot com solve i'll just post it again uh, yeah mr gopukumar has just mentioned the website where you can find his blog and also all the recording of the previous uh, webinar so uh, sunil is asking how dinosphere how oh, I have spelled it properly, suitable for air termination type LPS. So how? Dynosphere. Dynosphere. Yeah, uh, okay, how dynosphere suitable over air termination type LPS? Yes, it is actually very much suitable for the manufacturer to make a lot of money. But for the user, <laughs> It is equal to an iron rod. 
you have an iron rod or an aluminium rod 2 meters long and the dynasphere equals a 2 meter aluminium rod or a copper rod so what is advantages of course advantages for the manufacturer to make a story and make a lot of money the production cost is probably 5000 rupees but the selling cost is 75000 rupees propaganda business esc please read the esc standard understand how it is explained and use it but of course the national building code already banned the usage of non standard lightning protection systems such as early streamer emission controlled streamer emission and uh, the dissipation array system non standards are no more recommended in india over to you mr dominic mr balas subramaniam is asking uh, in case if there is a communication and lift control components placed in the terrace what is the recommendation of lps and earthing system should we have to make interconnection between lps and earthing lps and earthing conductor yes actually here the subject uh, it's a very good question the uh, uh, we have to make a shielding bonding with spds so here more than lightning protection system the indirect effect of lightning may kill your uh, electronics we need to ensure that the electronics is protected or the electrical systems are protected you need to have filters sometime you need to have spd sometime you need to look at the routing of the wires shielding of the wires and so on that is a subject which is internal protection probably we will make a presentation on internal protection maybe in next time okay uh, i'm more to prasad he has two question i'll take first question now do you recommend lps for the building which are near to cell phone tower where lps is fixed if the building is closer to the tower of course a direct lightning strike chance of a direct lightning strike is lesser we have to analyze it whether the building is protected or not if the building is protected uh, from a direct lightning strike due to the height of the tower of course you don't need it but please understand that indirect effect of lightning that means the conduction of current through the soil may destroy your electrical and electronic system so you need a very good equipotential bonding and spds uh, prasad second question some cases observed lps directly connected to lightning pole of 20 meters and lv cable also directly connected to the metallic pole is it correct to connect lv cables where lightning pole acting as lightning purpose as well as uh, dis uh, dis dis dissipation of lightning actually the question is not clear for me some cases not of clear, the clear. LPS, yes probably we will make it uh, next time because we have so uh, many maybe we will uh, talk to you you know uh, answer when um, time permits uh, prasad uh, mr oh, R, you can brief, uh, no, 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 refrain your uh question and uh, send a mail to mr gopakama which i will begin posted we will definitely uh, you know like to answer to your question and uh, if you look at him uh he gets after each webinar he gets almost uh, you know 80 to 90 emails directly and he never missed even one um, question so he is a man who can share continuous knowledge so rest assured your answer your question will be answered uh Again, Divesh Kumar, what is the recommended distance of earthquake from the building? I think we already told you, we'll come back to you on the special webinar on earthquake, which is, seems to be quite you know, uh, interesting for many. We will come back to you on that. So Mahesh Kumar, is a required separate earthing electrode for, to, for, for each down conductor? Of course, yes. Each down conductor, you need to have either a ring uh, uh, all around the building, interconnecting all the down conductors or if you go for a type a earthing electrode each down conductor should have one earth electrode now another uh, point which i wanted to add you add is uh, uh, we are getting actually a lot of hundreds of questions sometimes we may be able to take up only you know few of the questions in that case in the blog which we are making in solvelv.com there the questions and the answers are also included so in the blog you can uh, probably tomorrow day after tomorrow if you look at a uh, lot of answers uh, the question and answers as a table is also included please uh, go through it okay uh kaila she's asking while putting horizontal and vertical transverse conductors on roof 
since we use separator in rainy season, if water touches the conductor, what will happen? One moment. While putting horizontal and vertical transverse conductors on roof, since we use separators in rainy season, if water touches the conductor, number one, if water touches the, the conductor, it, the conductor may be corroded. Life will be very less. And uh, if the conductor contact, if the continuity resistances are uh, very good, then uh, the chance of further damage is not existing. But imagine the air termination is damaged due to some reason. And if the current is trying to flow through the water, then there can be some uh, bigger issues, which is still under uh, research. So I don't want to comment on that particular part. Thank you. I think I'll take uh, two more questions uh, related to today's subject. If it is out there, uh, you know, uh, Taral, you've been asking, do you have any data on thunder per year? I don't know which city, where, how. I don't know if there is data available on number of thunder that occurs in India. That is there. It is included in uh, National Building Code. You can find it out from the National Building Code. You can download National Building Code at free of cost from the BIS website and please go through it. It is included already. So does it uh, does it say that number of thunders occurs in India? Yes, number of thunderstorm days, city-wise. So there is a list of, I think, about 100 plus cities and uh, or, or, or let us say districts and uh, how many average number of thunderstorm days per annum is given. Because for risk assessment, this is the basic data which is required. So PU Patil asking, there will be chances of flashes to the side structure, side of structure. So what is the solution for that? If you wanted to avoid, there are two solutions. If you wanted to keep uh, the lightning protection away, keep it uh, far away, like the calculation which I told, five meters away from the building, which is practically not possible. The best way is you connect it to the building, you integrate into the building like they use the, as a natural component. Okay, um, one last question, uh, you know, Satish Shuran is asking, I think a uh, lot many people are quite interested in solve uh, LV. So they're asking, can you explain how to become a partner uh, or a you know, certified partner of uh, uh, Sol LV? So could you talk a little bit more about uh, that, uh, uh, Gopakuma? Yeah, uh, actually the idea of Sol LV is, uh, uh, you know, about two years back, once when the COVID started, uh, we started making uh, awareness classes on online. Earlier, we were doing, uh, you know, doing uh, online was not common, but after COVID, uh, online started, uh, classes started. And during the first uh, three months of uh, COVID, I did almost 122 hour classes. Uh, so out of that, then the people started asking, okay, the verification of building, testing of the building, IS732 which is uh, the equivalent is followed worldwide. But in India, we don't have the habit of doing proper testing, which is also the main reason for fire due to short circuit. How can we handle it? Then I tried to uh, educate a lot of safety auditors to do this safety audit. But after one year, I re we realized that it is a big failure because people try always try to misinterpret and then it was actually uh, with my name, people started claiming that uh, Mr. Gopagumar told to do this, Gopagumar told to do that. And then finally, people started installing a lot of air electrodes in soil and all. Then what we did is we started developing a software which will be working as an interactive platform between the client and us so that the, the people can ask questions. Uh, the questions are already included in the software. And the software will guide you how to make an electrical safety audit as per the standard. I stress as per the standard means the IEC 60364 standard for low voltage application. And there are some IEC standards for high voltage application. If an electrical installation is uh, uh, verified or inspected and tested as per these IEC standards, you can be sure that the chance of failure and the a chance of reduction of the life of these installation will be very much lesser. You get a very highly reliable electrical installation. So Solve is an interactive platform, digital platform, which we are still developing. We are trying to make it a kind of an artificial, you know, you know, uh, uh, intelligent platform. Thank you. Thank you for explaining about the purpose of solve.lv.com. Um, 
it is always a great pleasure to host uh, Mr. Gopak Kumar's uh, uh, presentation or a webinar. And uh, you could see him every on your on his LinkedIn. You can follow Gokumar on his LinkedIn or a Cape Electric uh, LinkedIn. Um, there are many more um, you know webinars. He's been at, at at least two in a week. I could see that he's been talking about it. And uh, very soon we will uh, release the next webinar in August that we will be doing it. Um, we will uh, you know inform you well in advance, and you may register and probably. You can also invite your friends and contact our business partners for this. Um, thank you so much for uh, Cape Electric for uh, you know partnering with us and continuously supporting Blue and Gray. Um, you know I'm very happy that we associated for so long, and I hope that we continue this association and reach the awareness program that we intend uh, uh, to make our country a proud country, a safe country, an electrical safe country. Uh, in the world. So thank you very much. You all of you have a wonderful weekend and stay safe. Have a wonderful time with your family and look forward to see you again. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to all the participants. As I said, the answers, please uh, look at the blog probably after two days. All the questions will be answered on the blog if we are unable to answer now. Thank you very much. See you all next time. Thank see you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.